Hi there. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the string data type and uh, some of the things that you can do with strings. Uh, strings is a very, very important data type in any programming language. Uh, and so we're going to dive a bit deeper into it and see how we can manipulate uh, data uh, using strings. So uh, let's create a variable and I'll just say it's a sentence. Okay, and we'll assign some sentence to it. And like I said, you can use single quotes or double quotes. If I use single quotes and say, uh, this is a sentence, and I could just print the sentence, everything works fine. But let's say if there is a special word in there, such as um, I'm coming home. Okay, now in this case, we have a quote in the beginning and a quote in the end, but you can see there's something wrong here. Syntactically, this is incorrect because Python thinks that this is a string because it's wrapped around with single quotes and it doesn't know what this is, right? Uh, and so in a situation like this where we have apostrophes, uh, you can use double quotes. So let's put double quotes here. And double quotes and now this should be working perfectly fine okay so I just want to bring to your attention if you have apostrophes like this uh, you want to make sure you use double quotes otherwise feel free to use single quotes now the next thing I want to talk about is that inside of strings you can have escape sequences and what an escape sequence is is basically we want to manipulate the way this string is printed or being used uh, by introducing a character in here. So for example, let's say that I wanted to print uh, this on one line and this on another line. One way to do this is I can print, I can invoke the print function on I'm coming and then I can invoke the print function again on home. All right, Or I can introduce a, an escape sequence. And so what an escape sequence is, you use the escape character slash like that, it's a backslash. And then you use something called n in this case. So if we use n, this represents new line. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna print first on the first line, and then this is going to print on the second line. Let me show you, let's hit run, and boom, there you go. Notice it's saying, I'm coming home on the second line. Now, the reason why there's a space before home is because after the new line escape sequence, uh, we have this character, a space character. So if we wanted to have home right underneath the word I'm coming, then I would just move that down and run that, and there you go. Now the next thing I want to discuss is being able to uh, pull characters out of this, individual characters or a series of characters out of this sentence. So let me give a new sentence that doesn't have an apostrophe and make it a little simple. So this is a sentence, not getting very creative at all here. But um, so we have the sentence variable. If I want to print the first character of this sentence, what is that character going to be? It's going to be this letter T. And so the way to do that is after this variable, we can use uh, the list notation, which looks like this in Python. Open and close brackets. And inside of these brackets, I specify the index position of what character I want printed out. And so I can use zero, and what this is gonna do is gonna print the first character. So the way this is all set up is each character in a sequence is uh, assigned an index number. So the zeroth index position is T, and then one is H, two is I, three is S, and so on. The space here is also uh, a character, and so it would also have a sequence number. An index number is what they typically refer to it as. So if we get the index number zero here, it's going to print the letter T. So let's run this, and there we go. Notice it says T. If I want to get the last character, uh, I have two options. One. I can just count and say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and say that I want the 17th index position. And when I type that and hit run, notice it, it gives me the E that I want. That's one way, and that's a very annoying way, isn't it? 
So let's say we don't know the number of uh, characters in a, in a given sequence or in a string. Uh, how would we get the last number? Well, there's a very handy method that we can use to uh, get the last character, and that is to use negative index positions. So if you want to start from the end here, uh, to, from the end of the string, I could just do minus 1. And that will always give me the last character of a string sequence. So let's hit run, and there we go, we get E. If I want the second to last, I would do minus 2. Let's hit run, and that will give me C. If I want the third to last, then I would do minus 3, and so on. Um, if I want to get the first character, that's always going to be 0. Okay? The first character is always going to be 0. So there are index positions assigned to each of these characters uh, going from left to right, as well as index positions assigned to each character from left, uh, excuse me, from right to left, okay? So from right to left, it starts from negative one, but this beginning of any uh, sentence or uh, string sequence is always going to be the zeroth index position. That just makes things really easy. It's really quick to just get the first and last character by using zero for the first, minus one for the last. Minus one will always give the last character no matter how long this uh, string sequence is. Now you might be wondering if there's a way uh, for us to get one of these words or any of these uh, uh, series of characters. And the cool thing is we can very easily do that by using a similar notation. Inside of these, inside of these brackets, I can put a colon here. Whoops. Uh, after the zero, I can put a colon and specify uh, the index position that I want to go up to, but not including, okay? So if I want to get the word this, uh, t is one, uh, t is going to be 0, h is going to be 1, i is going to be 2, s is going to be 3, uh, and I would need to go one step more to get the s. So I would need to put 4 here, and that's going to take me from 0. It's going to print uh, from 0 to 3, uh, and that's four characters, and that's going to give me the word this. So let's hit run, and there we go. We can see that this, the word this, is printed out. If I change this to a three, right, even though S is in the third index position, or is index position three, it's not going to give me S because it's non-inclusive. Okay, the second value here uh, is non-inclusive. And so we need to go one step further and, and put a four if we want to capture that S. Otherwise, if I run this the way it is, it's only going to give me THI, and the S is missing there. Okay. Now, if I want to, for example, get the word is, why don't you try this? Pause the video and try this out on your own, and you can resume to watch my solution. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. So all you really need to do is get the index position of I, and get the index position S and just give one more, uh, just move one more value up. So we start from uh, zero with index position, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I is five, so we start at five and um, we put in six is S, but we can't put six because this is non-inclusive. The second value here is non-inclusive. We need to go one step further and so we put seven here, and that is how we'll be able to see is printed on the screen. So let's hit run, and there we go, we see is. This concept of, uh, of referring to the index positions and getting the string is, is known as slicing. We're slicing the string and picking and choosing the, the sequences that we want from that string. This is known as slicing the data. So let me change this to um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Some arbitrary st string sequence. And I want to show you that you can actually skip uh, over characters and only pick and choose the ones you want. So let's say I want to get every other character. I want to start from A, skip B, but get C, skip D, but get E, and get G. How would I do that? Well, there's a third piece to this. This is the beginning value. This is the, the ending value from 5 to 7. Let's, let me change this back from 0 to, um, let's just go all the way to the end. So this is the sixth index position, and I would need to go one step further, so seven. And so if I was to print this, let me make sure it prints the, yep, it goes from A to G. So if I wanted to get every other character, I could actually use another colon and specify the increment. So if I just use one, this is basically going to print everything. 
the way it is. Let me run it. There's no skipping going on when I use one, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But if I use two, then it's going to skip and get every other value. So let's hit run, and there you go. We get A, it skips B, but we get C, it skips D, we get E, it skips F, and we get G, okay? So this is another way of slicing the data. If I want to just get the entire string from a given position, so let's say I don't want A, B, C, but I do want D, E, F, G. How would I do that? Why don't you pause the video and try that out? Okay, welcome back. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. So all you really need to do is get the index position for D first. And so that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. So we start from the third index position. And then we get all the rest of the characters. But I want to show you a shorter way. And that is if I don't put anything in the second uh, section of this after the uh, colon, I leave nothing there and I hit run. Notice it gets me D, E, F, G, exactly what I want. So this is a shorthand of, uh, we indicate the starting position, but we don't indicate the ending position. And it basically goes to the end by default. So this is also very useful. I can also do negative uh, two, and that would be starting from the F, and then it'll go all the way to the end. So let's run this, and notice it gets F, G. It'll start from the F and go to the end, G. I can move further, let me go minus four, and not give a second value, hit run, and it goes from D, E, F, G. So going from left to right, the index positions of each character uh, is zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. But going from right to left, backwards, the index position starts with negative one. And so we can use either of those two index positions uh, for every any given character. We can refer to its negative value, or its uh, positive value. So that's all I want to talk about now. Uh, we're going to continue on this topic of strings, and I'm going to introduce to you some functions that you can use uh, to uh, work with strings. Uh, we're going to look at that in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.